Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Sam Watford. I'm from West Yorkshire. Um, we today to talk about a project we did um, last two years, the Fire Fight Safety Project. Um, uh, two years ago, uh, um, area manager of Ops came to uh, Station Commander Chris Bates and he said, we need to come up with a way of sharing learning, we need to be better at learning, and we need to come up with a, a way of looking at how we train all our operational crews to come up and be a bit smarter. Uh, Chris approached me, uh, I went to work with him, and then we had um, an admin lead who basically, neither myself or Chris can use a computer, so she organised us and made sure we were in the right place at the right time. There's uh, quite a number of people that have touched on it. Uh, both nationally and locally. And we, what we found was uh, nationally, it come in, you'd get a series of um, things to do. it go to an office, it'd sit in an office for a number of years because personnel change in the office, and it never actually got out to the people that matter. The people that matter to me are people who write by engines, because they're the ones who are doing the actual job. Um, and again, West Yorkshire, we identified we were as guilty as any other organisation for that in that we had a lot of knowledge and I think somebody touched on it earlier that if we've got information and we're sitting on it and something then does happen, where do we, where do we sit with that? Um, and we were the same, they'd go up to an office at our headquarters and it'd be there and a lot of learning outcomes, uh, as we took recall there, but there's a lot of good practice as well that we don't share as a fire service. So we had to come up with a way of sharing that. Uh, a couple of key um, Things that drove us on. In January 2016 in West Yorkshire, we had a make to 25 um, mill fire, which we committed 60 breathing apparatus teams into a basement of a mill. Um, it was just prior to the UPA procedures coming out, so we were looking at engine control point supervisor and things like that. But we actually we trained to it in West Yorkshire, so we decided to implement them new the new policy, the new procedures and the new roles. I was given the role of engine control point supervisor in sector two and I committed 20 teams into a basement of a large mill. Subsequently that mill burned down and is a cab back. But we tried everything, we did everything. There's a lot of learning from that. But from the debrief, the formal structured debrief from 25 appliances five appliances went to the structured debrief. There's a lot of learning from all those other people. I've committed, like I said, 20 days into, into a basement. I never went to the formal debrief. Uh, so me and Chris looked at it, uh, we went out and we interviewed a lot of people who have gone to this incident. And, and we put, we had to put um, some seminars together. So a one day seminar, we get four appliances at, at a time. We did have to take them off the road, so it was, um, how the best how the best do we do this? We we took the uh, thing that we'll take them off the road or we'll have them available like this government. Um, and we delivered over 60 of these, so 60 days um, where I stood in a much of like this, delivering to our operational crews. And not only until we started delivering these did we learn how far off the market my shots we were. And that's quite it's quite hard to say sometimes that. You know, because you always think, yeah, we're, we're really here, we really are here. Um, but our crews, we seem to have a culture of they wouldn't ask for help, they wouldn't say they'd done something wrong because they thought they were going to get in trouble from our senior managers. It could be far from the, as far from the truth as possible, that, but that was the culture that we had in West Yorkshire. And we found from the BA teams going into this mill fire that they were willing to take risk that and being put into risk situations where they shouldn't be. And so we really try to focus on risk and benefit. My risk and my risk benefit is going to be different to my area manager. It's going to be different to uh, another watch manager. But we've all got to get to that risk and benefit and, and the best way of sharing it. And we found by doing these in, a, in an open environment, a relaxed environment like this, people actually talk to us and they shared their thoughts with us. Um, every single operational firefighter, uh, from brand new uh, trainees right up to the chief fire officer, all attended these seminars. 
We also had delegates come from South Yorkshire, North Yorkshire, uh, and Humberside, uh, and, we, and we worked with them as well. Um, as well as Truman uh, Mill, we also looked at um, Paul's there, well, which you will be aware of an uh, incident in Manchester where West Yorkshire had some uh, dealings with the um, investigations. So we had a little bit of knowledge from that. Myself and Chris went over to Manchester, spoke to some of their officers who were part of, um, of that process as well. We showed them the presentation that we want to show to our crews. We, got, we tweaked it with their um, say so, and then we went back and delivered it to our crew. There's a lot of good things that came out um, from, from Paul's air world that we thought we could pass on to our crews as well. Okay. Um, so that's kind of why, why, we, why we came about. Um, so that's what we, we sort of had to, we had to look at drafting and delivering this one day seminar to all our operational crews. Uh, we, we delivered 25 off site breathing apparatus exercises. We talk, you talked about going to different regions. We've got quite a good uh, relationship with Leeds City Council, and they've got an abundance of schools, nursing homes, all in types of buildings that are derelict now, they don't use them. Uh, and they allow us to go in and train them. So these are not training environments where crews go and they know the, the, they know the environment at the back of their hand. These are real life um, places where they could get turned out to any day of the week. Um, six pump exercises. So we were testing 2016, we changed our the beer procedures, so we, we brought in um, different on the stage one stage two beer procedures. We looked at difference in uh, edge control point offices and things like that. But we've not actually done any further training since we actually implemented them up until that point. So we've done that to make sure that our crews and we did it as training, it's not it was an assessment. Because the feelings from our crews in West Yorkshire were, were assessed to death. We just assessed, 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 assessed. Nobody's actually teaching us anything anymore. So that's where we, we put these on. Come and do what you would do. And then we'll chat about it. And again, from that, I've personally, I've learned loads of other people what, they, what they've done. And what good practice as well. That allows me then to share that with other crews that are coming on. It's important that we pass that information on. And again, I've had... Um, Colleagues from South Yorkshire, North Yorkshire, Humberside, our control staff was controlled. We'll send a message uh, to those with those positive pressure ventilation in use. Some of our control staff didn't even know what positive pressure ventilation was, but we were telling them it was in use. They came out and they can actually see how chaotic an initial uh, stage of incident is. And like, ah, now we know when we're getting onto the radio. We know why you're not getting back to us. Because your driver's running off getting up, hose reels up, he's getting into water, he's setting the air bars up, they're doing this, doing, oh, they're doing that. We now know we, we should try and get you. Why? Uh, and our control staff, they benefited a lot from coming and observing these off-site exercises. We looked at um, PPV. Uh, so in 2016, we introduced the road uh, attack bed officer. Um, but we never actually trained anybody in the use. In West Yorkshire, we're quite advanced in our training and our operational use of positive pressure ventilation. Uh, we introduced a role of officer, but we never actually told anybody how to carry out that role. So again, myself and Chris, uh, we put um, we were 19 days in total, four sessions a day, two pumps at a time, rolling through an, an off-site premise, a premise where they could get turned out of an old nurse, you know, Small of the building and showing how to ventilate it, but what the tactical officer would be looking at. Okay, focusing on that firefighter safety. Your your job is looking after you know them teams inside. You're looking making sure we've not got any more fire spread, things like that. Uh, we we'll, we introduced a piece of equipment, um, the piercing nozzle, and um, myself and Chris were in, uh, involved in that. Again, that's. It, it's a big SDS drill, drill a hole through the wall, shove a lance through, it's connected to a high pressure hose reel, turn it on, practice prior to sending teams in. Um, quite difficult to get some teams, some crews to buy into that, because what do we do when we turn to a house fire? We turn up, it's, it's one hose reel, two VAs, kick the door in, and then we go. Um, and this one is just trying to reset that thinking 
Kenny Rex go look for an off-site venue. Luckily, we've got a farm in Leeds, uh, so we could put some live fire training in an off-site venue, a farm where they, so we were setting fires in this building, and they were turning up and just pouring fox pipe into it. Um, and then we looked at heat stress, uh, and so we, we, we became, there were only two of us, and, and then obviously Jess who, who looked after us, but we became like a central hub within West Yorkshire, um, and again, was uh, services that I've talked to, we've got all these different departments, and they all start calling yourself different names, it totally confuses me, I can't keep up, but nobody talks to each other within them different departments. Ops equipment don't talk to training, training don't talk to ops learning, ops learning don't talk to these. So me and Chris became sort of a central hub where a lot of people had come, oh, well, can you help us out with this pub? Just go and speak to so-and-so. All right, well, I'll take it. I won't speak to so-and-so with you. Uh, and what we did with heat stress, we looked at, we got our health and safety department and our cascade department involved in talking. And through looking at uh, a lot of work that uh, GMC had done, um, We've now implemented a reduced wear, so maximum wear time in West Yorkshire of breathing apparatus is 20 minutes. Because that's the health study that uh, GMC have done for Paul's Aero, is the maximum human body tolerance was 20 minutes. Now when you sat in with the, with the chief and the area manager and he says to you, why do you make our beer wear as well to the cylinder contents on the back rather than what their body can tolerate? And you stood there going, uh, uh, Quite sure, Gaffer. Um, so we're sure to have taken that decision and our maximum wear time now for a beer wear 20 minutes. We're just listening uh, and we're going off the information that we've got. That said, we've got to caveat that if you're damping down on a circumfort wear, you can extend that uh, wear time, but it will be logged. You will log that, that this is why, and your decision log differs why you've done that. Um, and we looked at like fluid intakes and things like that, so we all have five fans, but should we walk drinks packages, walk, walk bottles and, and, all, and all sorts of things like that. And just in case I'm trying to bring all different departments working together. We looked at promoting discussion, uh, which, which could be quite difficult with firefighters sometimes. Um, we'd have a room exactly like this. You know, at the start of the session, because there's a station manager stood in front of them, they'd all be like that, arms folded, but by sort of mid-morning, they'd all be like we are now, a bit more relaxed, because they know they're not going to get a grilling, they know it is open, and we want them, we want them to tell us their thoughts on things. Um, and we looked at firefighters making decisions, because as an incident commander, what we realise is outside, I might have, or I should have, more information than anybody else about this incident because I'll go and find that information while my crew are setting up um, the right equipment to enter the building. As soon as that BA team enter that building, they've now got more information than me because they can see what's going on in there, they can feel what's going on in there. And it's, it's important how we get that information back from that crew. And in West Yorkshire, we think we were missing them key, that key point. But we're never asking them. Well, what is it like in you know, it? What conditions like? How hot was it? How smoky is it? What type of what, what was the smoke doing in there? We never really delved into that. It was, have you found the fire? Is the fire out where you surf? It was the kind of only thing. And I log my hands up as former head of breathing and British training for West Yorkshire. I never taught anybody to do that. Because I'd never been taught that. So you kind of trying to change the way. Try, Making practical firefighters again. Making firefighters think for themselves again. Because a thinking firefighter will solve any incident for you without any, any problem. Then we looked at from a discussion on expectations and the culture of firefighting taxi and commercial premises. 60 VA teams, I think it took some the largest building, you know, a lot of people would say, even when we went to GMC, like they can't imagine. But in North Yorkshire, we wouldn't have 60 beer teams to put into a building when they said to us recently, said, we can't do that. Why would you put 60 beer teams in? Because not one person came out and said, 